My first sort of three things that uh, I thought I'd share with you today, my first tip was remember it's about serving people. When I moved from the corporate side of the world to the private client side, a very wise senior advisor to a family in the UK said you need to have a servant's mentality, a servant's heart. You have to want to serve, you have to be proud to serve, you have to care. He used the word, you have to mind. And I think that's really important. If you see the service industry as your stepping stone to the top table, or purely a way to make financial reward, I'm not sure that you will find the success you're looking for. I think that ties in with the trusted advisor role that is used and banded around a lot, but I think we all want to be that trusted advisor. And genuinely, I think that's the best way to get the professional and financial rewards we all want. And in my case, being in the property world now, I don't want to be a broker or an intermediary or a runner for clients finding the property purely. I want to be an advisor to the clients. I want to be trusted and they turn to us and ask for our advice. Um, in this context of serving and people, I think there's so much I can say I'd go on for, for way too long. But one practical tip that I've learned is when you're on a call to a client, before you launch into anything, ask the client, is now a good moment for them? In our modern technology world, clients aren't necessarily sitting at their desk waiting for you to call them with their pen and notepad waiting to take notes. They might be getting out of a car, having done their shopping on a busy side of the road with bags and shopping, if they had to pay for them, and a kid under one arm and a phone under the ear, and if you launch into your brilliant tax structure at that point, or ring them to tell them that your fees have slightly overrun your estimate, you're not going to get a good response. And actually we find that if you ask that, 50% of clients almost will say, can I call you back in 20 or an hour when I'm sitting comfortably and ready to talk about what you are? So that's one tip. Uh, the second one, I think ties in with what Arabella said about being commercial and understanding your role, our role, within the wider transaction that we may be advising on. Um, to give you two contexts, uh, to note, um, I used to do private equity deals before I went into property. So I need a context of private equity and a context of property. When I was doing private equity deals, I was on the finance side, the leverage finance element of the deal. And I definitely thought I was the most important person in the deal. I thought I was the most important law and everything came down to me getting the financing. And it took me a while to realize that actually, this deal had been going on a year, 18 months before I even got involved. And this private equity principle had probably been charming management and working on management and doing a deal and, and structuring the deal and then presenting to his investment committee. And this, this deal was his whole year. He'd now done the financial and some of the legal diligence and he came to me for the financing. And actually he had a commercial objective, which is I want this deal to happen now. I've done all of this, I get it, I want this deal to happen. And my role was to make that deal happen. Or if there was a reason it shouldn't, to be very clear about that. But my role wasn't to make myself so to say. And I think the same is in our property world now, when we're finding for a client, if it's taken three, six, 12 months often to find them their dream house, and we take a granny and the whole family and everybody falls in love with this house, and we get to make an offer and we get it accepted, well then I need the lawyers, the surveyors, the private bankers and the other professionals involved to work in that five, 10, 15 day time frame to get the deal transacted. Because that's what the client is getting, that's what they want, they love this house. But yes, the diligence has to be done right, and issues have to be flagged both for them, for lenders, and for future liquidity. And I think that if you can deliver the commercial alongside the technical excellence, which to be honest for us is all something we take for granted amongst the peers we work with, if you can deliver with your te technical excellence the commercial objective the client wants, that's when I think you add value. Otherwise, I think you're just a cost to the client. And my final and third one, I'm probably overrunning my five minutes, it was, it was I was split between two. One is I wanted to say be confident in what you do because clients want confident advisors over the table. But be humble too, because I've never met anybody who's succeeded who hasn't been honest and said there was a bit of luck along the way. But actually what I wanted to share with you was something I think is very important uh, and something I learned quite late in my career, and that is to find balance in everything that you do. And I learned this from a very brilliant lawyer who I had the privilege to work with, who was one of the city's most respected corporate lawyers. Um, he was fiercely hardworking, and one rumored story is that when a, a young associate approached him to take the weekend off uh, to go to a wedding, he asked the, uh, the junior lawyer, did they have a speaking role? <laughs> um, 
So very sadly, shortly after he retired from the firm, his 17-year-old son passed away from an infection of the brain. And that partner, now a consultant of the firm, spent the next few years doing incredible speech talks to students all around the UK at universities about law and what a brilliant career it was. And it was a very incredible, inspirational talk, very honest, about doing meals at three in the morning, and I think he's built a generation of lawyers from it. And I went to one of these talks because uh, people said, you must hear it's incredible, it's inspirational. And I, and I went to one of the talks, and there were 200 students, and he gave his inspirational talk, and it was amazing to listen to him. I felt like very proud to be a lawyer, especially in the firm which he had led for so long. And then there was a QA, and a and, and after a few questions, uh, a young student asked, uh, asked him, what would he do differently in his career? And he thought about it, and he answered, I would have gone home a little earlier every day. And I don't think anybody in the audience bar me knew the poignancy of that answer from one of the most respected, senior, incredible lawyers who had been the most successful I've ever seen in, in that profession. And I think it had a profound impact on me and how I tried to do my business. I know that we live in a 24-7 tech world and private clients now require our services outside of the old-fashioned norms of business hours. But I think if we're to be truly successful in what we do, it's vital that we find that balance in everything that we do. Um, I want to wish you all, sorry, to say, I wish you every success and a lot of fun along the way and, and thank you for the chance to, to talk tonight.